What's going on guys? It's Tom New York and today I'm bringing you a brand new video where I'm going to be talking about the truth to the recent mightiest governor change and where they went wrong. Now I talk about this on Twitter a lot. I don't know how I'm not sponsored by game fuel, man. Honestly, the fact that you can reclose this can is just super cool. Anyway, before we jump into this really quick, if you guys were wondering what my thoughts are on the Ninja Gaiden crossover event, they totally dropped the ball here. Lilith, like, come on, what, what is this? Okay, you have a crossover with one of the most action-packed ninja franchises in all of gaming history, and you give us a portrait with a bundle that does not have very much value at all, right? We're getting four stars and three gold keys. Like the only reason you would buy this is for the name plaque and the gems, right? Which maybe I'll do. And then the event is a puzzle. It's a put an action packed ninja crossover is a puzzle completely dropped the ball on this event i am not excited about this event i don't care about this event the fact that i'm actually annoyed because i'm gonna have to look at this event for 44 more days that's what's annoying about this event right so Lil, if you really drop the ball here you know what i'm saying like i mean the fact that we can get some of this stuff for free hey that's cool right that's fine but like man this really could have been cool a ninja update would have been awesome and they gave us a freaking puzzle and some terrible bundles i if i were if i were working for ninja gaiden i would probably be a little bit upset like man you really gave us the short end of the stick here or maybe ninja gaiden just didn't pay them very much i don't know whatever the case might be but yeah like this event not interesting whatsoever anyway let's go to the mightiest governor okay let's talk about the truth as to what happened here with the mightiest governor change and the truth is that the community's expectations were based on assumptions. Listen, I am not really that excited about this change either, right? I'm in the same boat as some of the other content creators. I think they missed an opportunity here to put a choice chest. But the truth is, the truth is, this was the original mail. Nowhere in this mail do they say we're getting a choice chest. Nowhere in this mail does it say we're gonna get to choose from every Mightiest Governor Commander. In fact, it actually says governors can choose event prizes from said list. They said it was going to be a list of commanders. Now, we all assumed that it was going to be, you know, a list of every Mightiest Governor commander, right? That's, ah, uh, like, look at my face hat. Um, we, we thought it was going to be a list of every Mightiest Governor commander, but they never said that. So the truth is, our expectations were based on assumptions, and it's our own fault for being let down. I mean, I, I know it hurts to hear that, and it sucks to, like, that that's the reality, but again, the reality is that we expected one thing based on literally no evidence. There was no evidence to to assume that, or to, to prove that they were going to let us pick between any mightiest governor. So that's the truth. The truth of the matter is we're let down because of our own expectations, right? Now, what went wrong here, what went wrong with the mightiest governor event is that this update actually doesn't address address the original problem, right? Remember, the, the, the problem that they were trying to solve was to synchronize the available commanders amongst all kingdoms that are, that are past light versus darkness, right? And so if we go into Osiris League though, you know, shout out to my boy Shinji in Kingdom 1382, they're in the same bracket as Kingdom 1. So, so Kingdom 1382, for example, hasn't even gotten Nebuchadnezzar, and they're going to go up, they could potentially go up against kingdoms that have had two Trajan wheels already, right? So, like, how does that, how does that fix the problem? It, it actually doesn't. Objectively, the problem still exists. You're still going to have kingdoms uh, that are fighting up against older kingdoms in Osiris League Season 4. So, yeah, that is, uh, that's, that's the problem, and the problem persists. Now, what we should do is we should be patient and what we should actually look for is the next mightiest governor what does the next one look like so the first one is clearly cavalry right that's the theme here if the next one is cavalry and it doesn't have whatever the new cavalry commander is gonna be coming in april then we should be freaking out because that means that they're gonna do three or four sets of cavalry three or four sets of infantry three or four sets of archers three or four sets of leadership and then they're going to start the cycle over again and that would be tragic right if we have to see these three commanders for the next you know 56 days then that's actually a huge problem like that's totally trash absolute garbage right but if the next mightiest governor is infantry for example and then the mightiest governor after that is archers and then the mightiest governor after that is leadership well then okay i can see what they're doing okay they're gonna just cycle through all the commanders and eventually what's gonna happen is 
all the kingdoms will have all the same synchronized available commanders and then you know they'll be introducing the new commanders in all the kingdoms at pretty much the same time so that would be the long game solution but we already waited a long time for this update to come out and the expectation was that it was going to fix the problem when it came out uh not that it was going to eventually fix the problem after they've cycled through all the commanders right so i think that's where people are upset because right now as it stands the problem that they were trying to fix is still there and no one's really excited for these three commanders right now of course attila still dominant i don't know what people you know people are saying attila takeda is not good it's still a great combination let's just be clear okay especially for hitting cities um chandra gupta is maybe potentially gonna see some play and saladin is old he's an old commander right so you know if you if you've never gotten these commanders before well then you know what great guess what you've got an opportunity to get them now um you know but but for players in older kingdoms they're really upset now let me also be clear about one other thing too. This is actually a, this is a good change, right? Like if we take a step back and we distance ourselves from our expectations and what we hoped they would have done and what we think they should have done. If we just look at what's happened, right? They had a one commander, my DS governor for four cycles. Um, and now they've changed it to one where you can pick your commander. So objectively, this is a, this is an improvement, right? It's actually an improvement because now players get to choose which commander they want, which is better. The other thing we have to identify is that this doesn't affect 95% of the player base because most free to play players are not going to win the mightiest governor anyway. Right. And so again, we have to, and I have to constantly remember this as a content creator, a majority of players are not that affected by this. And also a majority of players will actually benefit from this because now they can pick their commander. So before we start burning down Lilith for the 40th time this year, let's just realize that this actually isn't the worst thing in the world, right? Is it the best solution? No. Is it what we wanted? No. Is it what we expected? No. Is it what's best for the game? I don't think so, but like, what do I know? I'm not a game dev, right? So maybe in the long run, they have a strategy where this is actually going to work out. So again, the, the truth of the matter is our expectations were, were really high and they had, they were baseless claims. And the real issue is that it just doesn't immediately solve the problem that they were trying to solve. That's, that's the real issue, right? It's an improvement, but it doesn't solve the problem. And so that's why I think a lot of players are upset. That's why I think a lot of players are frustrated with this change. What I'm thinking about now though, is let's say, you know, this, this cycle comes and goes, then there's the next mightiest governor cycle. And then the cycle after that, you know, I think that, and then I think the cycle after that should be the one with the new commander, or maybe it's the next one. I'm not sure. Um, but regardless, it's most likely going to be a cavalry commander, right? And so what is that going to look like, right? Like, let's say, let's say their plan is to go, um, one cavalry, one infantry, one archer, one, uh, um, leadership, and then cycle back. So what if they introduce a new cavalry commander? And then do we have to wait for that whole cycle to go through before we get access to the new commander? Cause at that point it'll have already been like what, eight weeks or something ridiculous like that. So yeah, I think starting with cavalry was probably like the biggest thing, right? Like if they had started with infantry or if they had started with archers, then I don't think people would have really been upset, right? If they started with archers and you could get Nebu, like, yeah, you wouldn't get Moctezuma, but nobody really cares about him. So it is what it is. And then the next cycle was the new cavalry. Then it would have been like, okay, cool like this the cycle is fine right that would have worked out but i think you know another issue another thing where they missed they just it was a, a miss was that they started with cavalry you know these are the oldest of the of the bunch right so when the next cavalry commander comes out what are they going to drop off saladin and say see you later and then it'll just be the new one attila and then chandragupta is that how it's going to be i have no idea but again i think if they started with archers or even infantry because i know a lot of players want zenobia still um i think there would be a lot less outrage from the community but again it's just it's all about that that perception and the assumptions that we made going into this now the biggest thing that i'm concerned about right because mightiest governor is whatever the biggest thing is that this means the wheel of fortune is going to be a pick three let's just be clear okay let's just let's just call it how it is it's gonna be a pick three we just we, based on this there's just no reason to continue to assume the wheel of fortune is going to be pick whatever wheel commander you want right do i want that a thousand percent yes 100 percent yes that's what i want right that is what i want but based on this i think the odds of that 
have been reduced to nearly zero at this point. I think they're going to do the same thing. It's going to be a cavalry Midas governor with a cavalry wheel of fortune. And you know what? That's an improvement, but it's not really what we wanted. It still doesn't really solve the problem that we talked about before. So it is what it is, right? Um, this update apparently isn't going to be as great as we thought it was going to be. Again, Lilith had the opportunity to deliver what the players wanted. We even told them what we wanted, right? We even said like, you know, oh, hey, look, they're changing my DS governor and wheel of fortune. Yay. I can't wait to pick my commander. I can't wait to pick from any commander, right? Lilith right that's what the player base wants hello and then they'd release that release this right so they, they missed the mark now again we're not game devs so we don't know like there's probably a reason why they did this instead of a pick one chest and it's going to be the same with the wheel of fortune there's probably a reason why they are going to do a three commander wheel of fortune instead of any wheel of fortune and i would be willing to bet it probably has something to do with money I'm just gonna you know take a shot in the dark it probably has something to do with money right because when it comes to exclusivity meaning this commander is only around for a limited time and then it's gone for a while that in incentivizes players to spend money for that event right so if we see this and we think okay next cycle i won't be able to get a cavalry mightiest governor event and in fact it'll be four cycles before the cavalry commanders come back now there's still an incentive for me to spend a lot for this event. Whereas if every mightiest governor event is a pick, whatever you want, well, then it's like, ah, you know, I'll, maybe I'll get the next one or, uh, you know, there's, there's no rush. I'll just, I'll compete in one where it looks like I'll have a good shot, you know? So I think the reason that they're still limiting it and they still have some constraints on it is because that, that, uh, perceived exclusivity period uh, is actually what they're hoping is going to drive sales for gems and things like that. So that's my theory and it kind of sucks, honestly, but it is a business at the end of the day. Um, you know, the developers and Lilith, I think there's a, there's almost always going to be a disconnect between the people that are actually making the game. And then the people in the suits and the, the suits and ties who are making the financial decisions. I think they probably butt heads pretty often and the game devs probably would have wanted this to be a pick one chest. And then the people who are, you know, in accounting and marketing are just like, mm, no, that's going to affect the bottom line too much. We got to still limit it in some way. Those are my theories. Those are my assumptions, guys. I think the wheel of fortune is going to be a pick one of three. And that's a bummer because you know, we already like, if you're a spender, you already have these daily bundles. You know what I'm saying? Like you can already get some of these commanders just by buying these dailies. So I don't know, dude, I don't really know how I feel about this. Um, it sucks to think that the wheel of fortune isn't going to be what we thought it would be. Now, again, it, it could be right. It could, but let's just be real. It's, it's probably not. Anyway, guys, if you enjoyed this video, if you found it entertaining, useful, or informative or anything like that, make sure you drop a thumbs up on it. It really helps out the channel a ton and subscribe to the channel. If you're new around here and click that bell to be notified the next time that I upload a Rise of Kingdoms video. A majority of you guys are not subscribed, so make sure you go ahead and do that. Comment down below your thoughts and opinions on this change. I think a lot of players aren't very happy with it, but do you think I'm on the right like path with assuming that the exclusivity is, is their attempt at driving sales? I That's my speculation, but I would like to hear your theories down below. As always, my social media links are in the description below as well, so make sure you follow me over there on Instagram, Twitter, Discord, Facebook, all that stuff. It's always down in the description. And as always, there is a link in the description below to download Rise of Kingdoms absolutely for free for your PC or your Mac. It's a program called Bluestacks. It's my favorite way to play Rise of Kingdoms, and that's how you can play it on a really big screen, which let's be real, it actually helps you a ton in those big group fights, being able to see exactly what you're doing. So I think you have a nice advantage by playing this game on a bigger screen. And like I said, it's free. So click that link and give it a try. With that being said, guys, thank you so much for watching. This has been Amiark. I will talk to you guys again soon. Peace.